Hello, uh, uh, everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for the invitation to participate in this uh, workshop. And also, thank you very much to Liu Pinguan and Anthony Vicioli uh, to, for organizing this nice initiative. So in this talk, we will discuss about fee forward control and some tuning rules that can be used to improve the, the, the performance of this uh, control approach. This is the outline of the presentation, where I will first start with a short introduction about the uh, the motivation of the uh, of this talk. Then I will go through uh, some uh, examples to show the advantages and disadvantages of FIFO control. In section three, I will present some new tuning rules that we have developed to improve the performance of, of this control approach. And then in section four, I will uh, present some indexes that can be used to quantify uh, when FIFO control is useful to be used or, or not. And I will end with some uh, conclusions. Well, uh, as uh, it's well known, uh, uh, disturbances are external signals that affect to the process output and uh, move away from the reference. Uh, these signals cannot be uh, manipulated, and sometimes we can measure them, and some other times we cannot measure them. In this case, uh, in this talk, we consider that we can measure the, the disturbances uh, as is typical in, in process in industry. Uh, well, this is the feedback control loop that we will use along the presentation, where we will call PD to the transfer function relating the process output with the disturbance signal, and PU to the transfer function relating the process output with the control signal. And we will have a feedback controller uh, that, in our case, it will be a PID or a PIE controller in most of the cases. We will use a step like a disturbance signal uh, in this presentation, but uh, the, the results can be extended to some other type of uh, disturbance signals. Then when a disturbance arrives in the control loop, uh, in a feedback control loop, uh, a typical response that we get is the following. Uh, once the process output is affected by the disturbance, the controller starts to react and uh, try to react the disturbance effect, making possible that the process output goes back to, to the reference. As we can see, it takes some time, and the reason is because the feedback uh, control loop scheme uh, is a reactive control approach in such a way that the controller uh, uh, changes uh, the control signals once the process output has been uh, modified uh, by, in this case, an external uh, disturbance. In the case of the classical feedforward control uh, approach, the idea is to avoid this uh, in such a way that uh, uh, the control signal is modified uh, before the process output is affected by the disturbance. Uh, in this way, it is able uh, with this scheme, uh, we are able to uh, uh, remove uh, the, the disturbance effect before the process output is uh, uh, modified. The idea is very simple. As we can measure the disturbance, we can use this information through a new controller, which is called a uh, feedforward compensator, and we add this information uh, to the control signal. So according to this scheme, we can calculate the closed loop uh, transfer function relating the process output with respect to the uh, disturbance signal, is this one. You can see here. So if we can, if we want to uh, uh, remove to eliminate the disturbance effect, we need to make this term equal uh, to zero. What leads to a feedforward compensator transfer function like this one? Well, so we can calculate the feedforward compensator by dividing the uh, by dividing PD over uh, uh, PU. So this is very simple. Uh, it works uh, very well in such a way that if we implement this control scheme, we can completely remove the disturbance effect. And this is the, 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 uh, the typical uh, uh, approach that, 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 that we teach to our students or that we can find in most of tech uh, books. However, in, it's interesting to see that in order to calculate the fee forward compensator, we need to obtain the inverse of PU. And this is not always uh, possible and sometimes uh, is not uh, realizable for several reasons like those that you can see in the slide because of the delay, delay inversion problems, unstable server, integrating poles, and so on. 
then a classical uh, solution uh, for this problem is just to implement only the realizable part or in practice in practice, it's also common to uh, implement the static uh, uh, feed forward just by dividing the, the gains of the two transfer functions, uh, PV over uh, PU. So in this case, as we cannot uh, perfectly reject the disturbance, uh, we usually obtain a response uh, like this. Of course, uh, uh, we improve a little bit the, uh, uh, the response with respect to the feedback uh, classical feedback control loop, but now we get a strange overshoot and the response is uh, deteriorating. So the idea and the motivation of this talk and the tuning rules that I will present you later is just to improve this response. Being able to just, for instance, remove the overshoots or uh, trying to uh, uh, improve the performance according to uh, some metrics like uh, the integral absolute error, the integral square error, or something like, uh, like that. So if we analyze uh, why this uh, response is uh, being obtained, uh, the reason is because uh, when perfect cancellation was possible, uh, uh, this term was zero. So there, there wasn't information feedback into, into the loop because the disturbance was uh, completely rejected. However, now as a perfect cancellation perfect cancellation is not possible, this term uh, is not zero anymore and it's feedback into the loop. And then the feedback controller needs to react against this new strange uh, signal, which is uh, the result of this uh, uh, operation. And this term is what we call residual term. And it's the reason of these strange oscillations and this strange, strange uh, uh, behavior. So, uh, before, when perfect cancellation is, was possible, we, we typically designed the FIFO forward compensator in open loop and the feedback controller according to any uh, well-known tuning rule. And we did it separately. However, now when perfect cancellation is not possible, we need to do it together. We need to inform each other about this, this problem. So then, uh, according to this analysis, uh, about nine, 10 years ago, we started to, to, to research in this topic and we realized that uh, there wasn't uh, so much information about this problem in the, in the literature. Only a few textbooks mentioned a little bit the problem. Uh, there was, wasn't any tuning rule uh, about that, only some uh, 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 control schemes uh, modifying the classical control approach. And for that reason, uh, we started to work in, in, in this topic and to develop the, the tuning rules I, I'm going to present you uh, now. First, I briefly uh, present the FIFA work control problem with a couple of examples to show the perfect cancellation and no perfect cancellation uh, uh, results. And then let's consider the feed forward uh, control approach with the equation for the feed forward compensator. We will use the feedback controller as a PID or a PI controller. And for this first analysis, uh, we will use four different feed forward compensator uh, structures. These uh, four cases for static, static with delay, delay, and delay time delay. So we assume that PU or PV as first of the system with time delay, and according to this transfer functions, we can calculate the four different structures for the feed forward compensator that we mentioned uh, before. So let's start with the first example where perfect cancellation is possible by, uh, we can see we can divide PV over PU without uh, any problem. And we will see that only in this case, which is the one uh, using the whole information of the process dynamic, we can reject completely the, the, the disturbing effect. In this case, the PA controller has been tuned according to the Amigo uh, tuning rule. So here is the result. In the left part, uh, we have the re simulation result uh, for the open loop case, which means that the FIFA controller was disconnected. And in this case, uh, the whole control approach was used, combining both FIFA and FIFA forward uh, controller. As we can see, and as we mentioned before, uh, only for the uh, leak lag with time delay case, the disturbing effect can be completely uh, uh, removed. And in the other cases, as we don't have uh, the whole information of the, sy the system, it cannot be possible to reject uh, completely the, the, the disturbance signal. So uh, let's consider as a second example, where in this case, the uh, time delay for PD is smaller than PU, and therefore we 
can implement only two cases for the fee forward compensators that we cannot implement the, the 10 delays. And let's use the following uh, transfer functions for these examples. So we can see the, the 10 delay in, uh, in PD is smaller than in PU. These are the two uh, fee forward compensators. And again, we have used the Amigo uh, method to tune the BI controller. This is uh, the result we get. As we can see now, we cannot reject completely the disturbance uh, effect. But what is interesting here is to see that um, uh, the response for the case where we combine feedback and feed forward controller is worse than when only the feed forward compensator is using in, in open loop. The reason is because this residual term we mentioned uh, before, as we cannot completely remove the disturbance effect, this residual term is feedback into the loop and we obtain a worse response. Uh, and again, uh, remember that we have designed the fee forward compensator in open loop. We have designed the PEI, the PEI controller according to the Amigo method. And then when we combine both together, because of the residual term, we obtain this oscillation and this worse uh, uh, result. So this issue uh, was only observed some years ago by uh, Brosidov and Yosef in their uh, textbook. And they propose to use the residual uh, term just to feedback the residual term with a res reverse uh, sign uh, into the loop. And uh, according to this, the uh, interaction between the feedback and the feed forward compensator can be uh, removed, and we can design the feed forward compensator just in, in open loop. So, in the following uh, sections, uh, I, I will present uh, the current rules for these two uh, control schemes the classical control scheme and the non interacting control scheme, which was the one proposed by uh, Brosilov uh, uh, and Joseph. In our research, uh, we have been working with different inversion problems, uh, and we have uh, uh, results for all of them. Uh, however, in this case, uh, in, this, in this talk, I will focus only in the uh, time delay inversion uh, problem. So let's let's see what happened in, in this case. Uh, uh, remember that in this situation, the time delay for PD is smaller than in, in, in PU. And then for that reason, when a, a disturbance signal arrives in the system, will affect to the process output before we can do anything by this path, uh, considering the fee forward compensator. We can see uh, this uh, uh, result better graphically. Uh, this is the residual term. And then at the, at the top, uh, uh, we are representing these two uh, elements uh, separately. In green is PD, and in blue is the, uh, the combination of the fee forward compensator uh, uh, PU. So we are considering that a, a, a disturbance signal arrives in time instant t equals zero. And here at the bottom, uh, we see the, the whole response, which is the difference between, this, between these two terms. So as we can see, when the uh, log disturbance uh, arrives, uh, PD starts to react. So during this time, we cannot do anything. And this period, this time, is the difference between the time delay of PU and PD, and then when this time passes, we can start reacting with the uh, feed forward compensator trying to react the disturbance and being able that the process outputs go back to the steady state. So uh, we cannot react in this uh, period of time, but we, we can modify the feed forward compensator and the SAIC of this then being able to modify the final uh, uh, process uh, output. And this is the idea that we will do using the, the, the different tuning rules that I will show you in a while. And at the same time, we were able to use the effect of the feedback uh, controller into the, the, the process uh, output. Then uh, the idea is just to propose uh, tuning rules for two different situations. Uh, in the first case, we will use the, uh, the classical fee forward control approach. And in this case, we will be able first to propose new tuning rules 
uh, considering the interaction between the FIFA and the FIFA World Compensator, and we uh, uh, proposed uh, this new solution to consider uh, that interaction. We will also propose uh, tuning rules to uh, optimize the performance of the process output. And then in the second approach, we will use the uh, non-interactive control uh, scheme. And as in this case, uh, there, is no, there is no interaction between the feedback and FIFA World Controller, we will focus only just in, uh, in to obtain the tuning rules to improve the, the, the performance. So le let's start with the first uh, approach where we will use the classical FIFA World Controller scheme. So remember that we assume first order transfer functions for PV and PU. Uh, we will use uh, a PA controller as a FIFA controller and a link lab uh, uh, transfer function for the FIFA World Compensator. Uh, first, uh, uh, we will try to reduce the overshoot that appears because of the interaction between the feedback and FIFA World uh, Compensators. Um, we will do that by modifying the FIFA World uh, game. Then we will try to modify the rest of the FIFA World parameters to minimize the integral absolute uh, error. Uh, we are always looking for uh, very simple tuning rules that can be calculated based on the model on the model parameters. Uh, to reduce the, the, the overshoot, uh, as I told you before, we will try to modify the FIFA uh, uh, gain by combining both open loop and closed loop uh, information. So when a disturbance arrives in the control loop, the following static chain uh, appears uh, uh, because of the feedback controller, that in this case is a PI. So this static chain can be approximated by this term, and this uh, term is the responsible uh, of the oscillation that we observe in the previous uh, examples. So the idea is just to remove this feedback contribution to the uh, uh, FIFA world uh, uh, game. In this way, we obtain the following tuning rule, which is a close, a close loop design because uh, the FIFA world game is not calculated using only uh, open loop information anymore, but now we use also closed loop information. So as you can see here, uh, we are using the model parameters uh, in the calculation, the PA parameters, uh, but we need an estimation of the integral uh, error to obtain a final uh, tuning rule. In order to do that, uh, we can use the uh, uh, process output, output response uh, against uh, the low disturbance. And this, then as uh, we are using first order transfer functions, uh, we consider a step like disturbance signals, we can easily uh, get the temporal response for this uh, term. Remember, as we are working in the inversion, uh, tiny line inversion problem, first we will get a response only for PD uh, uh, once the differences between the time delays uh, passes, we will get the, the rest of the, of the response. So we can uh, integrate uh, this uh, uh, temporal response and we can easily get this very nice expression for an estimation of the integral error. Uh, that, can, that can be used for uh, uh, two cases. For the case where we don't have any problem with the time delay inversion, uh, for the time delay inversion problem, which is the case we are studying uh, now. So as you can see, we can easily uh, calculate the new FIFA World gain based on the model parameters, the feedback parameters, and the FIFA World parameters. Let's show a very simple example where we have a time delay inversion uh, problem. So we will evaluate these two cases for the FIFA World Compensator, the static and, uh, case and the link lab uh, case. Uh, uh, we will also apply the uh, FIFA World Game reduction according to the new uh, tuning rule. So this is the result for the static and for the leak lag uh, FIFA World Compensators. In dust uh, lines, you can see the, fif the feedback uh, uh, results. Uh, in dotted lines uh, is the uh, classical FIFA World Control design, the result of applying these two uh, uh, FIFA World Compensators. And in solid line, we can see the new result according to the proposed uh, tuning rules. Here we can see how the uh, uh, static gain, the original static gains, 
uh, were reduced uh, uh, according to the new uh, tuning rule. And from the result, we can also see how the overshoot was, was almost uh, reduced co uh, completely. Then once the oversuit is reduced, uh, we need to fix the other uh, parameters for the fee forward compensation. Uh, uh, in this case, we will fix uh, uh, the zero of, of the um, fee forward compensator uh, equal to tau u in order to cancel the pole of p u. And what remains is to uh, determine the value of, of the pole of the fee forward compensator that will be used to minimize the integral absolute uh, error uh, metric. So in order to consider this metric, we will separate the response in two parts uh, from time zero and until time t zero, which is the time where the output uh, crosses the set point, and then from this time instant until infinity. Then we can use again the temporal response that we got before, and we can integrate uh, according to the same procedure uh, 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 this uh, temporal response in the three different um, parts. And at the end, we obtain this very simple expression, which, de which depends of the model parameters and the fee forward controller. Uh, uh, and then if we minimize this expression, we uh, uh, obtain this very nice equation uh, that allows us to determine the value of the pole for the fee forward compensator that allows us to minimize the integral absolute error. And this is the final uh, result where we have two options when there is no uh, uh, any inversion problem at all or, or when we have uh, the inversion problem. As you can see, when we have the inversion problem because of the time delays, uh, what we do, what we have to do is just to reduce the, the pole uh, the classical pole of the fee forward compensator by this expression, which depends on the differences between the time delays between PD and PU. So we've applied this new tuning rule for the fee forward pole uh, to the um, to the previous uh, example. Uh, we obtain uh, uh, this result. Uh, here we can see the fee the feedback uh, uh, result just without fee forward. The classical uh, fee forward uh, uh, result. So in that dot line is the result when we only apply the uh, the new tuning rule for the uh, oversuit reduction, and in solid line is the the the, the new tuning rule combining both the uh, fee forward grain reduction and the uh, uh, new tuning rule to fix the pole and minimize the integral absolute error. As you can see, the performance is considerably improved. And here we have a comparison uh, uh, of the integral absolute error for the different cases. We can see how uh, it's improved uh, quite a lot when we combine both the fee forward uh, and pole uh, tuning rules. So finally, this is a summary of the guideline we, we propose. Uh, we can set the, 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 the zero of the fee forward compensator to cancel the, the, the pole of PU. Then we can calculate the pole of the fee forward compensator according to the new tuning rule that we should accelerate the, the response to minimize the integral absolute error. And then uh, we will reduce the fee forward gain to uh, 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 decrease or try to eliminate the overshoot in the response. Well, uh, let's continue with, with the second approach where remember that we will use the non-interactive uh, control structure, where uh, now uh, the interaction between the uh, feedback and feed forward controller is is removed because we are uh, we feedback the residual uh, term uh, in, in, into the loop. Uh, therefore, uh, the idea is just to uh, we don't need to remove the overshoot according to the feed forward game. Uh, we need just to adjust the the, the pole of the uh, the feed forward compensator. <coughs> to reach any objective. Uh, we will try to, to get three different rules. One is the, the is, is exactly the same that we got in the previous uh, approach to minimize the integral absolute error. And we will uh, get uh, a new a new two tuning rules uh, uh, to remove completely the overshoot and also to minimize the integral square error. Uh, again, we look for very simple tuning rules based on the model, uh, the model parameters. So I will, 
because we don't have any interaction between the uh, uh, feedforward uh, 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 feedback control loop. We will focus in the open loop response, and then we uh, we will analyze the residual term uh, because of the non-perfect can cancellation. And this is the expression that we have uh, because we are using first-order transfer functions. So. Uh, if we take a look to the residual term, uh, we can observe that if we accelerate too much the, the, the pole, the time constant on the feed forward compensator, uh, we, we can provoke uh, uh, some oscillations in the final response. And it's because the feed forward, uh, uh, this, this part of the, of the response, which is given by the feed forward compensator, is, is too fast. So, uh, uh, one possible uh, tuning rule uh, can be to provide a, a, a value for the time constant for the feed forward compensator to remove this uh, overshoot uh, completely. This can be easily done uh, if we try to, uh, to make that the setting time of these two transfer functions of these two terms are uh, identical. So the, the idea is very simple. It's just be able to fix the, the, the pole of the time constant of the uh, uh, FIFOA compensator that make possible that the settling time of these two transfer functions are, are equal. So if we consider the, a settling time of uh, as four times of the time constant of the system, uh, we can obtain this uh, result for the uh, time constant of the FIFOA forward compensator. So it is interesting, if we take a look to this uh, rule, it's very interesting because it implies a, very, a natural limit uh, on the performance. Uh, and if we try to, to choose a, a time constant of the F4 compensator larger, larger of this value, we will get a, a worse uh, performance because we will compensate the response uh, very late. So it's also interesting to compare this rule with the ones we obtained in the previous uh, uh, approach uh, because uh, both of them are practically identical. As you can see, we only change the uh, denominator of this of this part. So we have two uh, tuning rules. One is just to uh, remove completely the overshoot, uh, and the other one is to minimize the integral absolute error. Uh, and then we are going to propose a, a third uh, uh, tuning rules that is that will try to optimize the integral S square error. So we will uh, uh, follow the same procedure as before. We will uh, uh, calculate the integral S square error expression of the using the time response we used in the previous uh, calculations. And then once we get the final expression, we will minimize uh, uh, with respect to the uh, uh, FIFOA compensator time constant and uh, we get this uh, uh, final equation, which uh, allows us to minimize the integral square error by calculating the, the time constant on the fifth power compensator using the, the model parameters. So what is also interesting here is that uh, these three tuning rules are very similar and can be generalized as we can see here in, in the slide. And then at the end, we have this final uh, uh, guideline which uh, can be used with the non-interactive uh, control schemes where we, we can set the, the, the zero of the FIFO compensator to cancel the pole of PU. Then we will set the FIFO gain as typically is done because here there is no interaction between the FIFO and FIFA compensator. And then uh, we can uh, tune the FIFO time constant uh, depending on the objective uh, we want. If we want a conservative result, uh, we will set this alpha value to 4. If we want to minimize the integral absolute error, we will set this value to 1.7. And if we want to minimize the integral square error, we will uh, calculate the alpha according to this uh, expression. So uh, here uh, I will show you a very uh, a short example to compare these three solutions. Uh, uh, here we are showing uh, uh, the classical FIFO work control design. It means that we, we will not implement the uh, non realizable uh, part, and this is the response we, uh, we obtain by using the non interactive control approach. And then in these three results, we are using the three different tuning rules I showed you uh, before uh, to remove the overshoot, uh, to minimize the integral absolute error, and to minimize the integral square error. 
and in green color we are also also comparing uh, a result for a tuning rule proposed by Haas and Haglund where where, uh, where you they use uh, uh, optimal procedures to determine the feed forward compensator that minimize the integral square uh, error uh, as well. So, uh, as you can see, what is very interesting in our uh, tuning rule is that we can we can uh, uh, modify the shape of the response according to the objective uh, of the aim uh, to have in mind. So here also we can see a, a numerical comparison of the different uh, results. Uh, it can be observed that the best result for the integral square error is obtained for the rule proposed by Haas uh, Haulum, uh, but in this case it at the expense of a very strong uh, uh, control signal. Uh, here I, I forgot to, to mention you that we are uh, not only given information about the performance metrics, but also some information about, about the control effort according to these to this, uh, 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 calculations. And also, uh, this is the initial peak in the control signal. So we can see here that uh, considering all, all the results, uh, the best uh, tuning rules uh, with a, a good trade-off between performance and control effort is the ones uh, by minimizing the integral of absolute uh, error. Then let me show you some of the performance indices that we have obtained to uh, quantify when it's useful to use feed forward uh, feed forward control approach. And those indices uh, will be calculated based on the process uh, parameters. The indices we will propose for the two con feed forward control approaches that we have analyzed in this talk. And we uh, uh, continue uh, with the assumptions that uh, we work with first order transfer functions, uh, a leak lag con uh, uh, compensator for the feed forward. Uh, we will use a PI controller and we will consider in this case the lambda tuning rule. Uh, this is the index we are proposing. As we, you can see, we are comparing the integral absolute error of the feedback for the feedforward control approaches to respect to the integral absolute error of the feedback uh, loop. So, according to the to this index, when the index approaches to one means uh, that uh, uh, we gain a lot by using the feedforward control approach, but when it closes to zero, it means that we don't gain so much by using the uh, uh, feedforward control scheme. So in the following slides, I will show you briefly how we can estimate the values of the integral absolute error for the different control scheme in such a way that we can calculate this index in advance for testing the, the control approaches. So I, I'm not going to uh, to into detail. So uh, we obtain a, a, an estimation of the integral absolute error for the FIBA control uh, uh, loop just without the feed forward. This is the expression we get that can be calculated according to the model parameters uh, FIBA uh, controller. We do the, we did the same for the classical FIBA control scheme where we got this uh, expression with two different solutions, and we did the same for the non-interactive uh, feed-forward control uh, approach. At the end, we had three different estimation, estimation for the three different control approaches where we were able to uh, calculate these estimation, estimations based on the model parameters and the uh, controller and feed-forward parameters. So this estimation can be used to calculate the uh, proposed index in such a way that we can determine in advance when is uh, uh, useful to use a uh, feed forward compensator and also to, to decide which of the two control uh, uh, approaches uh, are better to be uh, considered. So let me show you some examples. In this first example, uh, uh, we are going to use the following transfer functions and we, will, we are going to compare the three cases, feedback and the two feed forward control uh, approaches. Here is a numerical result of these examples. As we can see here is that the real values of the integral absolute error of the obtained simulations. And here are the estimations according to the previous uh, equations I showed you. As you can see, the estimations are pretty good. Here is the, the, the index uh, uh, for the two feed forward control uh, schemes. And we can see both of them are close uh, to one, which means that the uh, uh, it's useful to use feed forward uh, in this case, as we can see in the simulation, the improvement is, is very high. However, now we can try to accelerate the, the response for the feedback uh, control loop in such a way that now the integral absolute error is reduced from 12 to uh, uh, 4.5. Uh, for that reason, the index is not as close to one as before. And for that reason, uh, these values are, are smaller. Uh, as we can see also in the simulation uh, results where well, uh, uh, the feedback uh, control uh, response was, was improved. 
Finally, in the third example, we are going to we are going to compare two cases: a case where the uh, load disturbance is fast, with the where the time constant is equal to the process time delay, and on the other case with, where the uh, disturbance is slower. In this case, the time constant will be ten times the time delay of the other process. Here we are comparing the indices graphically for the two cases. For in blue is the classical control scheme, and in red is the uh, non-interactive control scheme. As we can see. Uh, when we have uh, a, a fast disturbance, uh, the non-interactive component scheme behaves better than the classical one. The classical one uh, doesn't work very well. However, when we have uh, an, a slow disturbance, uh, the classical component scheme behaves uh, uh, better than the non-interactive case. Here is the, the numerical results for these two cases, the, the slow cases, and the, sorry, the fast case and the slow case. Uh, we can see again the estimations for the integral absolute error are really good. And according to the index, uh, indexes, we can see how uh, in the uh, fast case, the non-interactive control scheme be, uh, behaves very bad. Uh, however, when we have an, an a slow uh, uh, disturbance, uh, the, the classical control approach behaves better. And the non-interactive control scheme. We can see that in the simulation, this is the fast case simulation. As you observe, the classical uh, feedback control scheme is really bad with a strong oscillation, oscillation because, because of the interaction between the closed loop, uh, sorry, the feedback and feed forward compensator that we have analyzed along the, the, the talk. Uh, however, when we uh, have a slow disturbance, we can observe how the classical uh, FIFA work control scheme behaves uh, better. And it's because in this case, we gain a, a combining both FIFA forward and uh, 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 FIFA approaches, and uh, we obtain a fast uh, response. So, according to these indices, we are able to determine when it's useful or not to use a FIFA forward and also to compare the, the two existing FIFA forward control schemes. So, as conclusions, uh, we have proposed different tuning rules to take in consideration the inversion problems in the uh, FIFA work control schemes, tuning rules that were not analyzed uh, in the literature in the past. Uh, also, uh, uh, we compare the two available FIFA work control schemes. Uh, we have proposed some simple indices to, to, to analyze when it's, use, when it's useful to use the FIFA work control approaches uh, or not. Uh, future uh, research is focused on extend these results to MIMO processes, also to evaluate these uh, rules uh, experimentally. Uh, also, we would like to use it in distributed para parameter systems. Uh, here you have some references that can be useful for you with some new results that we have obtained recently. Uh, uh, of course, I would like to thank all of my friends uh, who have uh, working uh, with me very close in this, in, in this topic. And thank you very much uh, to everyone, and thank you very much for, for your attention and participating in this, in this workshop.